What's going on everyone? Today I'm going to go ahead and show you how to compile your own Windows based World of Warcraft The Burning Crusade server for educational purposes. This emulates a TBC patch 2.4.3 server utilizing the C Mangos project which has a very much alive community working on making it better every day. I won't be going over how to security harden the server but this is going to be a general overview of getting it all going. Let's go ahead and jump into the hardware and software prerequisites. So like I said, this is going to be a Windows based server. So you're going to want Windows 10 or 11 64 bit or Windows Server 2016, 2019 or 2022. For the server hardware specs, you're going to want either two physical or two virtual CPU cores as a minimum. I personally recommend four physical cores or virtual cores to help speed things up for compiling 8 gigabytes of RAM 80 gigabyte hard drive space this is for the OS and the binaries on the same drive along with some breathing room and then a 100 megabit NIC and let's go ahead and jump into the software prerequisites so we're gonna want 7-zip notepad++ boost latest version the C++ redistributable runtimes CMake latest version, .NET 6.0.x, aka being the latest version of .NET 6.0 desktop runtime, Git latest version, Git extensions, MySQL version 5.7.x, 5.7.40 is what we'll be using for this video, but if there's a newer version available, then go ahead and use that. The key thing is do not use version 8 or above at this time as it is not compatible with this project. Heidi SQL latest version. Now you can go ahead and use your own favorite SQL administration tool, but we're just going to go ahead and show off Heidi SQL in this video. And then finally, Microsoft Visual Studio 2022 Community Edition. All right, so we're going to go right down the line of installing those prerequisite software packages I was mentioning before. So I went ahead and pre-downloaded them all, but I will go ahead and show the websites as well for each one before we install it so that you know exactly what you need to click on. So let me just go ahead and pop this open here. And I did go ahead and number things just to show the steps that were going down here. Some of them are dependencies to continue to move forward installing other uh, applications here. So anyhow, so we're going to start off with 7-zip. So let me go ahead and show you if you're not familiar with it. So you can just go ahead and Google search 7-zip and then what we want to do is select the 64-bit version here but since I already downloaded it we're just going to go ahead and fire it up here. And it's pretty simple. Install nice and fast. Close out of that. And we'll go back here and next we're going to go ahead and jump to this guy. So the C++ redistributable package um, they actually have a really nice all-in-one package here from Tech Power Up, and so you don't have to go ahead and hunt down the specific 32-bit version or 64-bit version for it. This just has everything in it. So anyhow, we're going to go ahead and fire this up. And the key thing here is on the install underscore all dot bat, go ahead and right-click on it, select run as administrator. Yes for that. And so if you don't click run as an administrator, then it will prompt you to, to have to click through all the installers for this. This with running as administrator just makes it so that it automatically starts crunching on all of them here. So we'll give this just a moment. All right, now that that's done, we're gonna go back here and then we're gonna move on to Notepad++. Now this is optional, but it makes hunting through all the uh, various text config files just easier. So for that you would just Google Notepad++ and then you can just go ahead and select the latest and greatest version up top here. So I'll fire this up. Okay for this. Next, I agree. Leave it as the default installation path. Next. Everything here is good as is. We'll hit next. We don't need it on the desktop so we'll hit install. And I'm going to go ahead and run it right now just so I can set the 
first configs here. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to set this to dark mode. So if we go to settings, preferences, dark mode, dark mode on, that's of course optional, but I just feel it's easier to read. We're going to go ahead and close out of this. So now we're going to go ahead and install the .NET 6.0 framework here. And uh, so the site for this one. So you can just Google the .NET 6.0 and then it would be whatever the latest version is for the desktop or runtime portion here. And then since this is the 64-bit OS, we would just select X64 here. So we'll go ahead and kick this off. Install, yes. And we can go ahead and close out of that. Go back to the prereqs. Next, we're going to move on to Git. And so Git, once again, just Google Git. You would select the Windows one here. Or you can also select it over here. Download for Windows, latest version. So we'll hit Next. Next for the default path. One thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and check this right here. Check daily for Git Windows updates. It's not going to download the updates, but it will at least pop up down below and say that there's updates available. Best to keep that upgraded to the latest and greatest version. So hit next, next, leave this as is, next for this, next, leave it as is, next, next. We're just going to keep leaving everything as default, so we'll hit next. Next, 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 next. Leave that as is and install. Go we'll uncheck release notes. We don't need to read that. All right, next up is going to be the Git extensions, which I'll go ahead and just go here. But Git extensions, you would just go ahead and snag this guy right here. Not the portable version, but this guy right here, which should be the MSI file. Git extensions is optional, but for this video, I'm going to show how to use it with the project. I hit next, leave that as is, next, next. Won't allow the telemetry, next, install, and we'll finish this. All right, moving down, so now we're on to CMake. So for CMake, just go ahead and Google CMake. And the key thing is, is that you don't want the release candidate, you want the latest release. And so for this, you would just go ahead and hunt down this guy right here, Windows X64 installer, this MSI. Hit next, I accept, next. I go ahead and actually create a desktop icon, that way it's a little bit easier for me to use it. So we'll leave everything else as is. So next, leave it as is, install, yes for that. And one thing to note is that all of these links that I'm going to, I will have in the description down below to make it easier. So I hit finish here. Next, we're gonna move on to boost. And so boost, what we're actually going to be pulling from is pre-compiled downloads here. And so for here, you would just select the latest and greatest version. You'd click on this and then latest and greatest version here. And you'd click on that and then it would download. So in this case, 14.3. So we're going to go ahead and fire this up and we'll hit next. And this will take a moment. So just be patient. All right, so that took about five minutes on my machine, so we'll go ahead and hit finish here. So next up is going to be MySQL, which for MySQL, I'm actually going to have a link down below, which is going to be a direct download for this. Oracle has made it a little difficult to download this specific installer, so we're just gonna go ahead and kick it off here. Yes. And yes, again, it's going to 
come up asking about this mandatory upgrade. We'll hit yes. All right, so we're going to select server only. Hit next. Leave that as is. Execute. We do show details to make it a little more entertaining. Hit next. And next again. And again, we're going to go ahead and change this down to server computer. Leave everything else as is. So for the root password, just go ahead and make this something that you'll be able to memorize. So I'll just type something in here. And yeah, it's weak and that's fine. As for this section down here, we actually want to go ahead and click add user. And the username is going to be mangos. And the password is going to be mangos as well. And then we'll hit OK. Next. Leave this all as is. Hit Next. That's fine. Hit Next. And Execute. As I said before, this video is not going over security hardening of this, but obviously this would be one section that you would want to actually create a nice, strong password. So I'll hit Finish. Next. And Finish again. All right, let's see what we got next. So I'll do Heidi SQL and Heidi SQL. You would just download the latest and greatest version, which it already just tried to download for me. But anyhow, you would click the, you would normally be here. You'd click downloads and then it will, it would download. So we'll kick this off here. I accept next, next, next. We are going to uncheck automatically report client data back, hit next, install, and we don't have to launch it at this time, so hit finish. And then the final prereq here is going to be Visual Studio 2022, Community Edition, and then you would just click download here, and then you would select Community 2022. So we'll kick this off. One thing to note is that Visual Studio is going to eat up a fair amount of space. So I'll hit continue. And since this is a web installer, um, it's going to have to download all of the installer packages. So depending on your internet speed, it could take some time to pull everything down. And so what we'll want to do here is the only selection we want to make is select this guy, Desktop Development for C++. Check that. I'm going to go ahead and leave this all as is, but you could actually nitpick some stuff out of here that isn't actually necessary, but we're going to leave that as is. I am going to go ahead and actually drop this down so that instead of it saying install while downloading, we are going to do download it all and then install. I've seen some issues in the past where wacky things happen if we don't do this, but as you see, 9.42 gigs are going to be eaten up. So click install. And it's going to take a little bit. All right. So let's go ahead and click OK for that. And we'll go ahead and launch it for right now. Just so we can set some things up real quick. So you don't have to actually sign in here. We'll go ahead and click skip this for now. You can fine tune this how you like. I'm going to keep it on the dark mode. We're going to go ahead and click continue without code. Close out of this here. And then we can just go ahead and close out of it. This was only so that it finished technically installing. So when we go ahead and reboot, everything's just going to be fresh here. But before we reboot, we need to actually go in and adjust some environmental variables. So we're going to go ahead and close out of all of this. We're going to go to this PC, right click on it, properties. If you don't have this PC, you can go to start, settings, system about and then over here on the advanced system settings we'll click this environmental variables now the key thing here is that we need to do it under the system variables down here not up here but down here so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the boost variable so we're going to click new and then we're going to go ahead and type in boost root and then as long as you didn't change the default install path for boost, then it should be 
this guy here. I'll just make sure there's no spaces anywhere here. And of course, this is dependent on the version of Boost. So if you've downloaded and installed a newer version than this video, then you just want to make sure it matches the version you actually uh, in installed. So you just made it need to change that section out. So we'll hit OK. Next thing we actually need to do is we need to go down here to Path, hit Edit. We're going to click into here, and then we're going to click New. And then we need to add in the MySQL bin path. And I'll have all this down in the description as well, that you, so you can just copy and paste it in. So I pasted this in. I'm just going to make sure there's no space here. No space, that looks good. So now we just click into the blank area here. So it locks it in. Hit OK. Hit OK again. OK out of this. Close out of this. And at this point, let's go ahead and reboot your machine. So I will see you back as soon as everything is back up all right we are back so now we're going to start the real magic so let's go ahead and go down to explorer this pc or you can also go up to this pc here we're going to go ahead and go into the c drive and then we are going to go ahead and create a folder in here by right clicking in the blank area hit new folder we're going to call it Mangos. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and highlight it, right click on it. We're going to select Git Extension Clone. Select the language that you're using. I'm just going to go ahead and uncheck this, hit Apply and OK. That way that doesn't pop up again. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and copy and paste in the path from the C Mangos projects git page and so what it's stating here is that it's going to the c mangos folder and then it's going to actually create another folder which is going to be called mangos tbc which i'll go ahead and leave that as is everything else here looks good so we'll go ahead and click clone that's going to pull all the information all the source code data now we can go ahead and click ok and then next up, what we're going to do is we are going to clone the database information or the database source, I should say. So we're going to go ahead and right click on this again, get extension clone, select your language again, and then let me go ahead and change out this portion here. And then it's going to go ahead and create the tbc-db file or folder. So we'll click clone. Now we can hit OK. And let's go ahead and pop this open just to take a look at it. So now we've got mangos tbc and tbc-db in there. And we're actually going to go ahead and create another folder called run. Next, what we're going to do is we're actually going to modify or we're going to create a folder in here in the mangos tbc. So we're going to just click into the blank area here, make a new folder called bin, open it, and again, new folder, build -er, ir. And now we're going to go over to CMake. We're going to go ahead and show it where the source code is located. So we'll click browse source, this PC, C drive, Mangos, just Mangos TBC, select folder. Now we're going to go ahead and select the build er folder in bin here, select folder. And now we're going to do configure. We're going to leave this all as is, hit finish. And this will take a moment. All right. So even though this is red, this is not alarming. The key thing that we just want to look for is that nothing mentions that boost wasn't found. Found boost, so that looks good. Don't worry about these failed portions here. That's all fine. Everything else looks okay. So now what we're going to do a little bit here. So in here, you can actually select a few options. Um, I'm not going to go over what all these do, but 
For this video, we're actually going to go ahead and enable the auction house bot modification. And we are also going to select the player bot modification. Now, even though I'm checking them here, it still doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be enabled. Um, so you can always enable them or disable them however you like by just selecting what we've got here. Everything else here we are going to go ahead and keep as is. And we are not going to actually build the extractors because I will have a link down below in the description that will already have those files to speed this entire process up. Otherwise it can take a serious amount of time to try to crunch the files that will be necessary later on here. So, so anyhow, with everything selected here, we'll click configure again. It's no longer red. That's good. Let's click generate. Now the generate file is done. We'll click open project. I'm going to click always for this. And we want to select visual studio 2022. Wait for it to load up the files here. And we're going to go ahead and wait for it to stop doing the little scribbling down there. We want to make sure that this is at rest before we begin. It can take a, a moment or two. All right, now that's ready. What we need to do is go up here, drop this down to release, leave it as 64 bit, and then we'll click build and build solution. And now it's going to go ahead and start compiling everything here and this will take some time so feel free to step away and check back on this in five to ten minutes at least all right so visual studio is now done key thing here is this section here nothing's failed so that's fine so 11 succeeded zero failed zero up to date one skipped all looks good and the amount of time it took to do the crunching so we can go ahead and click file exit and we can go ahead and close out a CMake as well. And so next, what we need to do is go to your mangoes, mangoes-tbc bin, pop this x64 release open, and then let's go ahead and copy these files to the mangoes folder for run, paste them right into there. All right, so as I had mentioned about the extractors and the files that it would create, so as I mentioned, I will go ahead and have a link down below in the description to the files that are necessary. But what we need to do is we need to grab the maps, the DBC, the V maps, the M maps, and the cameras data. So I'll go ahead and pop this open since I already have it here. So here are the files that we need. So we'll go ahead and just copy these guys into here and we'll wait for it to crunch all right now those files are there now we need to start the process of building our database so let's go back to the mangoes folder let's go to the tbc db folder we're going to go ahead and run this guy right here the install full db dot sh file if you're not seeing the file extensions on here you can just go up here to view and just double check that file name extensions is in fact checked there. So let's go ahead and double click on this. And this could take a little bit the very first time that it kicks off. And so what I'm going to go ahead and do here is we are actually going to go into number one for manage settings. And then I'm going to go ahead and select number one again. And then we're going to leave this as is. So we'll hit enter. Port is fine. MySQL user is fine. Hit enter. MySQL password. So let's go ahead and put in the Mangos password. Leave that as is. Leave that as is. That's fine. Fine. Looks good. That's fine. We'll leave this as yes. Dev updates, no. Auction house bot default is no. Let's go ahead and change this to yes. Once again, this is optional. You could always leave it as no. Hit enter. And then let's go ahead and hit number nine. And then let's go ahead and hit option four. So let's go ahead and type in the root user. So root user is root. The password that you set for the root account. And then we're going to go ahead and select option one. 
for the full default CMangos core and TBC-DB installation, all DB with MySQL user. And then here's the fail safe. So we are going to type this in case sensitive here, delete all, hit enter, and then just let it go ahead and crunch. And it will take some time. If you're questioning if it's stalled or anything, or it's not doing anything, you can always right click the taskbar, go to task manager, and then you can just leave task manager running just so you can see that there is life. So we'll just give this some time and be patient. In some sections, it can hang for a few minutes. So just let it do its thing, walk away, come back in five to 10 minutes, and it should hopefully be done. All right, if all was well, then you should have gotten to this point. So we'll go ahead and press the space bar to continue. And then at this point, we can go ahead and do option nine for return to the main menu. Key thing here is, is that there is actually a database content version here. If there was no database created at this point, then you would have just two brackets, an open and a closed bracket here, just merged together and just like that. Two little character fields right there. So the fact that this shows up, that's good. So now we can go ahead and hit option nine to quit. All right, at this point, we are very close to getting things going. I'm just gonna go ahead and close that task manager here. Let's go back to the mangoes folder. Let's go to the run folder. And now what we need to do is we need to start shedding off the dot dist on every single configuration file here that has it. So let's go ahead and right click, select rename for auction house bot, click out of it. It's going to say, are you sure you want to do this? It could corrupt it. We'll hit yes. Same goes for the anti cheat. And then the mangoes.com file. The player bot. And then the realm d.com file. So at this point, this is your opportunity to also harden the server here you would need to go ahead and pop open the realm D comp file here. If we right click on it, go to edit with notepad. And then if we scroll down here, the line 119 here, you would go ahead and change out this guy right here, which would be the password so that it's not the generic mangoes. And then we can close that. And then the same, like I mentioned, is for the mangoes D. And it would notepad plus plus. And then we'll scroll down here. So line 70, 71, 72, and 73, you would also do the same exact thing by putting in the stronger password into these sections here. You could also change out the username here as well, if you wanted to, as long as you actually have it created in the database as a SQL user. But like I said, we're not going to be actually going over that in this video, but I just want to show that little piece. So at this point, let's go ahead and close out of this. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to go in and adjust the realm list database. So let's go ahead and fire up Heidi SQL, click new, go ahead and put in, if root is not populated here, go ahead and put that in and then type in the password for your root count. And so what we need to do is we need to go to the TBC realm D database, expand that out, and then click on realm list. Let me maximize this. Go to the data tab. And so right here is the realm list. And so the realm list is the realm that the clients would see when they log in. Um, so anyhow, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're actually gonna change the name out of this. We're gonna double click this. We're gonna get rid of the name and we're gonna type in the name Mayo. From mayonnaise, 
So that's in regards to chocolate mayonnaise cake, which, even though it may sound gross, it's basically using mayonnaise to take the place of the oil and eggs in the recipe. Anyhow, it's fantastic. Very delicious, moist chocolate cake. I will have it down in the description below for you to try out as well. Anyhow, moving on. So what we need to do here is for the address, we need to type in the IP address of the actual server here. So if we go to start, type in CMD for command prompt, hit enter, and then type in IP config, hit enter, and then we're going to go ahead and utilize this, the IPv4 address here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this guy. And then we're going to go ahead and double click in here, paste it in, click out of it, and just expand that out so we see it is looking good there. Port, we can go ahead and leave as is. Icon, so icon, realm flags, time zone. I'm going to go ahead and have a link down below in the description that explains these here, and I will actually show you the page. So this is what I will have a link for. And so this explains what each one is. Not all these are going to show up because this is just a general Mangos project, um, but it explains what, what the icons are, what the ID is, the name, address. And so icon would be, um, if you wanted it normal, PVP, Normal again. This is probably developer normal. Uh, RP, RP, PVP. And then, yeah, you can just look through here. Time zones, all that good stuff. For now, we're just going to go ahead and leave everything else as default here. And by clicking out of it, it instantly saves the data in. So we can go ahead and click on file and exit to get out of Heidi SQL. Close out of this. Get rid of that. All right. At this point, let's go ahead and try to fire the server up and see if it has any issues with us. So what we need to do first is you want to fire up the Realm D EXE. So just double click on that. If you get a firewall pop up, just go ahead and check that and we'll allow access. So the key thing here is that it fired up, it's holding on the screen, it didn't flash on the screen and disappear. If it is disappearing after you click and fire it up, then double check your realm log, realm D log down here. Open that guy up and it will generally mention where it's going wrong. Um, a lot of times it could be that if you did alter the username or password in the SQL database, then it needs to be reflected in the Realm D config and the Mangos D config here. Anyhow, so since Realm D is open, let's go ahead and fire up the Mangos D, the world server portion here. And depending on the specs of your computer, it could take a few seconds or minutes to fire this up. And the first time it fires up, it can take a little bit longer than usual. So just be patient. If you get the firewall pop up again, then just go ahead and check that again, allow access. All right, so again, key thing is, is that the world server here is actually holding and it also didn't do the pop up and disappear thing. One thing I do like to do is I like to scroll all the way to the top and then I like to take a look in this section here. If it mentions anything about extra, extra migrations or extra databases or anything like that, then you would want to double check that your databases are all in good order. Worst comes to worst, you could always try to back up your, your databases, drop them, aka delete them, and then just go through the steps of running the TBC DVD, the install full DB again, and then choose those options that we went through earlier. Um, to make sure that it repopulates all the databases. So anyhow, at this point, the server is ready to rock and roll and it's ready for you to start digging into it. I do wanna show just one more thing here. So if we go ahead and click into the Mangos D here, this doesn't have any accounts built out right now. And so what you can do to create an account just to start testing 
is you can type in account, create, and then you would type in the account's name. So in this case, I'm just gonna type in test, and then it's password, test, hit enter, and then account created test. Now, there's all sorts of commands you can do in here. You can go ahead and increase privileges or decrease privileges for the account. You can go ahead and set the expansion that it's been activated for. So with this being a Burning Crusade server, when you create an account, it's actually being created as a base vanilla WoW account. And then you need to up the account so that it's as if someone actually purchased the expansion on their account. So you'd have to just toggle it on. And so anyhow, with the account created, I'll leave it up to you to go ahead and Google what you need to do to enable all the different things, the GM levels if you wanted to, expansion levels, all that good stuff. So that basically concludes everything in this video. I'll be following this video up with a how to update the server to the latest and greatest commits, because if you follow the C Mangos project, you'll notice that there's changes basically happening every single day, bug fixes, and all sorts of good stuff like that. Anyhow, if you've enjoyed this video and found it to be useful, please like it and subscribe to my channel to keep up with other game server videos I'll be producing in the coming weeks. Once I go ahead and produce the video on keeping the TBC server up to date, then I will be moving right on to a Wrath of Lich King server video. So anyhow, take it easy.